So, um, in the introduction, um, Packet kind of sets up, um, you know, uh, the sort of uh, uh, um, the period, right, um, that leads up to the boom. So the Asian financial crisis happens in 1997. Um, it starts in Thailand before moving on to Korea and Indonesia um, uh, and, and throughout East and Southeast Asia. A big part of it, there's so many different reasons as to why it happens, but a big part of it is that um, the bubble economy in Japan collapses in 1991. And so because the Japanese economy is, 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 is um, in, in the toilet, that starts to reverberate throughout Asia. And then um, a lot of it has to do with, uh, the, uh, I think it's like the, the devaluation of currency, um, re real estate speculation, and then also um, uh, uh, a bunch of, uh, you know, like uh, investments and foreign investments that, that you know, and, and loans that kind of just all fall through basically. Um, also during this period, and it becomes, the, it's called the IMF uh, crisis because the International Monetary Fund, which we're also seeing a lot about these days, you know, with the global economy. Um, in 1997, I think the same year, I should know this off the top of my head. Um, my work is constantly about this stuff, um, which is, is, is located and, and, and ostensibly, you know, um, an American institution uh, provides a $57 billion loan bailout package to the, the Korean government, but, um, I'm not going to touch my face, but the caveat is is that they, there's there are all sorts of conditions attached to the package, um, which basically um, requires uh, the Korean government to entirely restructure its business packages. And so it's, it's one of these things that um, uh, someone like, uh, that I've already brought up, Joe Jun will point out, and, and, and people kind of knew that it actually made things a lot worse in the years to come. So, so ostensibly what the IMF did was open up um, uh, Korea to further liberalization, meaning, you know, like direct foreign investment, um, opening the market up for, for, for international, for foreign countries, right? Um, and on the surface, it seems like that, you know, injects a lot of money into the economy, helps it thrive, you know, um, it's not a coincidence that Korean cinema, K-pop, television, the Korean wave, video games all sort of explode in this period, and it's precisely because of these restructuring practices, because the government starts pumping money into the economy, right? But also it comes at the cost of like further neoliberalization, which means the decimation of unions, um, uh, youth unemployment, irregular labor, so the shift from you know uh, regular labor to, to irregular labor, so like people don't have benefits, that sort of thing, there's no stability. Um, uh, so a lot of, you know, it, it makes things much, much worse. Um, and this is also one of those reasons why, because again, we're kind of at the end of the semester and, and given the kind of extenuating circumstances, I'll, I'll just put it on the, on the table. Personally, um, and I think this will, I'm, hopefully this will help all of you as, as you kind of move forward. Personally, I'm not a fan of the sort of mode of thinking that we're, we're kind of often trained in, I think especially in American high school, it probably comes from, at least partially from like the sort of debate system. But you see it all the time of like the pros and cons thing. Um, and, the pro and, the, and the thing that I don't like about it is that the pros and cons thing is, is, it's done under the auspices of sort of critical thinking, but it's not rigorous enough. And it only works under the premise that, um, uh, uh, that there is a kind of, how do I put it? That that's even morally possible at all. And what I mean by that is that with some things, there, there's, there's no, there's some things that, that we don't ever think to um, um, uh, uh, have, like ask if there are pros and cons to something, right? Because it's so clearly that it, that it steps over a moral line. And yet with other things, we're totally fine with asking are there pros and cons? And to me, I'm always about it's never even really about one thing or the other, it's about that we have to be consistent across the board. So if we're gonna do a pros and cons model, we have to do it about everything. So like even something that's like unspe unspeakably, unspeakably horrible, I don't know, like cannibalism. What are the pros and cons of cannibalism? Do you, see, do you see how funny that sounds and how ridiculous that sounds? The way I feel 
when we ask something like, what are the pros and cons of neoliberalism? That sounds like, what are the pros and cons of cannibalism? I know that seems like a bridge too far, but for me, that's because uh, if, you, if we're thinking rigorously enough about this stuff, the cons, you know, what we're sort of lightly saying are cons are immense suffering um, of a lot of people. And so similarly, like, you know, we, we're kind of seeing a lot of this happen right now, unfortunately. Like, what are the pros and cons of, of opening up, you know, the economy? Well, the cons is that people will die. That's not a con. That's just something that's unacceptable. Does that make sense? Like, why I'm kind of insisting on this? So in a similar sense, like, you know, if we're talking about the quote-unquote pros and cons of neoliberalism, yeah, it's like, okay, great, so we have, you know, Korean films and, and, and Korean video games and K-pop. Um, well, K-pop idols keep committing suicide, you know. Um, pro gamers have, you know, like, stunted growth and, and health problems, you know. Um, uh, the youth and unemployment rate is, is um, you know, we've sur or Korea surpassed the U.S. I think it was, like, a record was, like, at, at like, um, is it like 10% in 2009? To me, those things, those costs, move past um, uh, the point where we can consider them simply something a con. Like, because the con almost seems like it's like um, uh, unavoidable, but but like you know something like a kind of um, I, I, my brain isn't entirely working yet. So it's like it's unavoidable, but we have to kind of just you know. It's 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 um, collateral damage, and and that's to me just too callous. Like I can't, I don't want to live that way. I want to be the, I want to be on the side that says like, no, it's unacceptable that people are going to die, regardless of what what the pros are, you know, regardless of what the end, um, the benefits are. Does that make sense? Um, again, it's another one of these things that I can kind of elaborate on, but I but I think I've I've, I've done to as as best as I can right now. And so like here's a, here's a, a very clear example of this. Um, in or right around this period in the 1990s, um, things were really kind of falling apart in South Korea because for decades um, they had, the country had been trying to industrialize and modernize so rapidly that it's like you know they're just putting things up. Um, they're not really kind of taking their time and doing it carefully. So I don't know those of you know, but a few years um, the Seoulho um, ferry. Um, it was just to get a, a ferry boat, um, you know, just capsized um, and, and killed. And, and again, a lot of that was due to, to ineptitude and corruption, but killed, you know, just, just countless people in this horrible accident that just shouldn't happen. You know, it just shouldn't happen. So it just, it's one of those things that makes you ask, like, what's so advanced about an advanced country? You know, what's so, f what are we first in? You know, tragedy. Um, but in the, uh, like, in, during this period, um, a department store, uh, this is, I, you know, I, I was there in the country when this happened, department store just collapsed, killed hundreds, um, a, a bridge in the middle of Seoul, not in, not in the middle of the, in, of, in the middle of the actual capital of the country, collapsed, killed dozens. Um, and so, you know, there have been years of, of uh, just so you know, like, you know, Korea had basically third world country, one of the poorest countries in the 1960s um, after the Korean War, um, military coup, so they have like military dictatorship until like 1988, and then so it's like democratization is happening throughout like the 80s. That's kind of the the sort of short end of the version. Um, those of you who take the class will talk about this, of course, to a to a much uh, higher degree. In 1998, so right around this period, um, Kim Dae Jung, uh, pre the president then, this is the first peaceful transference of power from ruling to oppositional party. Um, uh, so, you know, it's like, it, um, uh, throughout the 80s, it was basically like um, autocratic um, leaders. And then during this period, this is also, um, to a certain degree, Peckett talks about the death rattle for the Chebor, and the Chebor are, they're conglomerates, they're major conglomerates, so like Samsung, LG, Hyundai are the big ones. But it's not just that they're conglomerates, but they're like ruled like dynasties. So it's like it's like there's like succession, like the, like the show, like from family member to family member. Um, but it's not just that they're conglomerates, because there's an understanding that the conglomerates were central to the ascension of the country's economy in general. There's a lot of kind of national interest, both literally and figuratively, you know, by by you know um, 
by citizens, but also with the government. But um, uh, these conglomerates were, were kind of challenged during this period. Um, and, and because, you know, the, the sort of collapse, um, Pekka talks about uh, that the death rattle for their, their film divisions, right? Okay, so let's move on to the filmmakers.